I'm definitely going to get hate for painting this LPS, but here we go. Hey guys, it's LPS Honey and welcome back to a new video. Today's topic is a little bit controversial, but let's be honest, every time I've talked about prototypes, it's usually been controversial. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with LPS 675, aka Savannah Reed from the absolute legend of a series that is LPS Popular. And for those of you who aren't, it is this dachshund right here. A very popular and sought after pet back in the day. I don't know how sought after it is now because there are so many aftermarket and fake versions of it. It's very easy to obtain one of them and kind of get a cheaper, very realistic version of it. I actually haven't looked up this pet's prices on eBay in a while, so I'll put some up on screen of sold listings just so you can get an idea of what she usually sells for, aka the popularity. It doesn't have anything to do with the rarity, it's just supply and demand really when it comes to this particular LBS. So if you've been on my channel, you've definitely seen me talk about prototypes in the past and a lot of the times, prototypes, you see them in like TV ads or even pamphlets and a prototype image of 675 actually exists out there but only in a pamphlet. It's been kind of difficult for me to track down an image of it but if I can, I will put it on screen here. As far as I know, this is the only like actual image we've seen of 675 as a prototype or a different design is in this pamphlet. I don't think there's any actual photographic evidence of it existing. So it could just be a digital prototype for all we know. I'm not 100% sure. So if anybody's more knowledgeable, please let me know in the comments down below. But when it comes to this prototype image, a lot of people have taken it upon themselves to create custom versions of 675 to look like this prototype. I'll try and find some examples and put them up on screen. So you guys know this isn't like my original idea. I don't claim it to be. There's tons of people that have done this before me. A lot of people do, however, choose to use aftermarket versions of 675 just to avoid paying a steeper price for the real thing. But um, I'm going to do something a bit controversial today and I'm going to be painting one of my real 675s to be a matching prototype image. I know, I know, I can, I can hear the boos in the comments already, please, please, like I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this and let's be honest, a lot of people already hate my guts but let's just, just, just please bear with me. I paid for this LPS with my own money and I know a lot of people are going to be like just buy an aftermarket, just paint a fake one, don't paint over a real LPS, etc, etc and I 100% understand where people are coming from with that mentality and usually I would agree with it but in this instance I want to use this pen and um, yeah if you don't agree with what I'm doing like you don't have to agree I'm not expecting people to agree with what I'm doing this is going to be quite a controversial move painting her um, especially if it looks doo-doo I am praying to God that it, it looks okay when I'm done with it without further ado let me show you guys what I'm going to be doing what I'm going to be using and then just get straight into it so when it comes to customizing our little dachshund here there's only a few minor changes that need to be made to make it look like the prototype image and that is adding a white muzzle white underbelly and white back legs to match the front ones other than that she stays exactly how she is so it's not major changes and of course you only need the one color paint I'm going to be using crafty color in white it's just a very cheap paint brand here in Australia that you can get at Bunnings warehouse just to make sure I didn't need to mix my white with anything else before I started I did a little spot test on the underneath of her feet and it seems like the color matches pretty well so thankfully I don't need to mix anything to make it lighter or darker or even more yellow toned as for paintbrushes, I found that using these flat-headed brushes works a lot better for reducing streak lines, so hopefully it can work this time around as well. I am of course using white on a darker base, so I am a little scared that it's going to take a lot of coats and look streaky, but we can just cross our fingers and hope that this will turn out alright. So I'm actually going to start with the underbelly and back feet because they are the less visible, so if my technique's not perfect, it's okay because it's not on the face. The face I am doing last because I am the most terrified about that.
first coat of the underbelly, I know it looks streaky. When it comes to white paint, especially on a darker base, you really have to build it up a lot before it can look like a solid, cohesive color. So it's going to look streaky for a while, but as long as the end result is smooth, I'm going to be happy. And as tedious and annoying as it is, it's always better to do lots of smaller coats than big coats to avoid glogginess and streaks when it comes to white paint. Here's the second coat done. As you can see, it's covering up pretty nicely and going on quite smooth. So I think the more I build it up, the more coverage I will get. And while I'm at it, I'm going to do the bottom of the feet as well because I've been laying it on its side. So I feel like I can quickly do them while I'm at it. Honestly, not that worried about the bottom of the feet. You're not even going to see them. I mean, I'm still going to do them as a thin layer and as smooth as possible, but if they look a little messy compared to the rest, I'm fine with that. Here we are, third coat on the belly, second coat on the feet, and honestly, it's coming along pretty well. I don't think I'd have to do much more coats to get the belly covered, and the feet will take even less time because they're smaller. So I'm thinking of starting on the top back foot up here because you're pretty much mimicking the front feet. They're kind of messy looking, and that's how they've always been like 675 has always had that kind of messy splotchy paint on the front of their feet it's meant to be like little triangular pieces but it honestly always just looks a bit messy like i've not touched the front feet here this one is honestly perfectly painted and this one's a bit of a mess and they're all like that if you've ever seen anyone use a real authentic 675 they always have these kind of messy feet so it's kind of lenient when it comes to painting it. I'm, I'm going to try and recreate that on the back of this foot. Wish me luck. I am going to be doing kind of just like the toesies first and go from there because once this is coated i just kind of have to put in little spikes which is pretty simple not sure how i feel about it so far it is just a first coat so it's very blotchy but i think the color match is going pretty well so far so i'm gonna leave it to dry probably do another one or two coats on the top here and then see if adding the spikes makes it any better and of course like i said i'll probably need to do one or two more coats underneath just to make it more solid and one color but I'm pretty happy with it so far. You can see it from the side, which was kind of my mission. Um, and yeah, it's looking pretty good so far. Fingers crossed that I don't mess it up. And of course, the dreaded muzzle. Eventually, I will have to tackle that. Okay, I did more coats off camera, and I think the belly is pretty much good. Any little wonky lines that you might be able to see on the side, I'm just going to take some nail polish remover and a cotton swab and clean that up. Because the main body is the same color, I won't remove any of the necessary paint, just extras that I accidentally did over the line. As for the bottom feet, probably one more coat will be good. And the top of this back foot is actually looking pretty good at the moment. So I'm going to go in and try and do the little triangle shapes to match the front feet. Everyone, cross your fingers for me. Honestly, I'm dreading this. Also, I want to apologize about any lighting changes. It is later in the day. And we're also heading into autumn here in Australia. So it's a bit cloudy outside. So hopefully it's not too bad. But I do apologize because it is a little darker than before. I'm going to try and show me doing the triangles. At least one. My hands start getting shaky and I start getting very nervous. But as you can see, that's kind of the shape we're going for. Oh, the autofocus is going oh lord it's a disaster please okay you can kind of see it there i'm just gonna layer on top of that little triangle bit and and hopefully it, it turns out okay i feel like for a first coat that looks okay i have to keep reminding myself that it doesn't have to be a perfect triangle because like literally look at the front paw but for like a first coat that's fine i'm happy with that i'm gonna set it aside to dry and then just keep building upon that till it's more vibrant here's the second coat on the back leg i'm I'm definitely feeling it. I feel like I, I've kind of got the technique down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the other back leg on this side. I feel like I, I don't need to film it as much. You guys pretty much get the idea of what I'm doing. And uh, of course, the belly is all done now. So once I do those back legs, it's, it's honestly time for D-Day. <laughs> all right, status report. The back legs are done. The tummy is done. We are looking pretty good so far. So all that's left to do is the dreaded muzzle. 
I am so scared to do this because this is really the make or break of the whole situation. The face is a very delicate area with lots of different colors. So what I'm going to be doing is putting a bit of blue tack on the nose here to cover it up because I don't want to accidentally paint over that. I feel like I'm not really going to touch the eyes so I'm going to leave them as they are and maybe put a bit there if things get too close. But yeah, let's just give this a go and hope that it turns out because if it doesn't, I have completely ruined my LPS. And if there's one thing I don't want, it is to ruin this LPS. <laughs> Bozo the Clown over here, ready to go. Why does she kind of look adorable with a white nose? Like, is it just me or does this look really cute? But that's not why we're here. We're here for the muzzle, so let's begin. So if this first swoop doesn't work, I can always quickly wash it off with water. No problem, because this is quite easy to clean off before it sets. I'm just going to do one clean swoop over the top and pray that it works. So... It's going, it's going. Over here I'm not too worried about. I can be a little messy under the mouth here because it, it's like lumpy anyway. It's going to get fixed up over the coats. But oh my god, I'm, I'm freaking out. I honestly can't believe I'm doing this. Like looking at it right now, I think it's finally sitting in like, oh god. First coat officially done. A little sloppy, a little streaky, but it all gets covered up with multiple coats. So nothing to worry about there. I feel like it's meant to be slightly wider each side, so I'll see how it goes the more coats I do. But I'm glad it's finally over. The lines look pretty clean around the outside. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna leave it to dry and keep going. Hey guys, I've been filming this video for about two days on and off. And I'm currently sick you could probably kind of hear that my nose is a bit blocked and my voice is a little croaky not so bad right now but it was really bad earlier in the day um, but I I've pretty much painted everything that needs painting on our pet here so I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the blue tack off I'm most scared about taking this off because I did get quite a bit of paint on the top which has hardened so I'm hoping it won't like rip the rest of the paint off but the muzzle turned out pretty decent I just did a lot of coats over and over again and I apologize for not filming every single coat like usual um, because let's be honest, I never filmed the full painting process properly, but especially this time, I just felt really ill yesterday and it was just not going well. Um, but yeah, it's time to take off the blue tack and see. It's either going to be an amazing grand reveal and a perfect paint, or it's going to rip off the whole muzzle and absolutely destroy it. Either way, hopefully entertaining. <laughs> yes, I apologize for my stuffy voice, but let's go ahead and take this off I am so scared like look at this oh god it's definitely coming off I don't know if you can see it is catching the paint a little at the top which I'm a bit scared about so I gotta be really careful <laughs> all right looking good so far I'm actually gonna go in with this little knife and just try and get the small little pieces that are left stuck over I don't want to try and pull them off by hand because they're so small and it really risks taking the paint with it so hopefully by going in with this I can kind of like scrape it away without damaging anything that I've painted Here's how she's looking after I gave her a kind of scraping over her nose. There was quite a bit stuck at the top which really took a bit of effort to get off because it had hardened so much with the paint. But I think I was able to remove it all and she is now fully painted to hopefully, I, I hope, recreate the prototype version of 675. It's not perfect, of course, I'm not claiming it to be, but I am so, so pleased with how it looks. The paint came out way better than I thought it would. Of course, I was worried about streak lines and messing up around here because it's such a delicate area near the eyes. But uh, thankfully it turned out and I'm really happy that the blue tack method on the nose worked. So I guess this is kind of like a tip for you guys at if you need to cover areas up with something flexible um, without using tape or anything like that, just stick some blue tack down 
and uh, yeah, it should be able to get removed perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and seal the painted parts of her body up with a matte varnish. Unfortunately, my matte varnish isn't super duper matte, so it will have a teeny tiny bit of shine to it, but it'll be matte enough where it doesn't really stick out or look glossy. So once I've done that, I'll show you guys what she looks like all finished. And um, yeah, I, I'm just super happy with how she looks. Of course, as long as the varnish goes well, she should be perfectly fine, but I'm just so relieved that the muzzle worked out. Like that was the number one panic zone for me. And now looking at her, I can comfortably say that I am happy with this custom. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with my absolute pleasure and delight that I introduce to you my version slash custom of LPS. 675 Please, please hold your round of applause. I am so ecstatic with how she has turned out. As we all know, I was panicking throughout the whole process and I thank you all for coming along with the journey with me. Um, I'm just so happy with how she turned out. She's not perfect by any manner and hopefully you guys can see a bit of the detail on the back there. My camera's kind of doo-doo at focusing. But there she is and you know, I'll turn her around so you can have a look on the other side as well. I did get the back paws on the other side. She honestly came out better than I had hoped and imagined and I am so freaking happy with that. I of course sealed up the areas that I painted with a matte varnish so they won't be chipping or getting damaged anytime soon thankfully and um yeah, this is my take on what I think a prototype of 675 would look like based on the pamphlet images we've seen online. Personally, I think this version of 675 would have looked a lot better if it was released like this. It also gives it a more gender neutral look, which I really love, so I can really play any character with it. I, of course, do have a double of this LPS, so I'm going to bring in the original 675 so we can see them side by side and the changes that were made. I honestly feel like you can see straight away what I'm talking about with the gender neutral look. This one just looks so much more feminine, in my personal opinion. I mean, maybe it's just me seeing it, but that's how it looks to me. So front facing, there's not a big change. It's mainly just the muzzle, which in my opinion makes the biggest difference, but it's not a big change, if that makes sense. Then we have the side on view, where, you, oh, they kind of kiss and hey, calm down, fellas. Anyway, the side on looks very different. You have the little underbelly, which is now white, and the back paws, which are also white, but the muzzle also gives it a really cool look side on. From the back, again, not a huge difference back here, mainly just the back paws. And then the other side as well, I just dropped my paintbrush. For me, the biggest difference is actually the side on a view because you can see all the changes in one shot. So I think that looks really, really cool. And though the changes overall are not big in terms of how much I needed to paint, I think it really does make a difference to the whole visual aspect of the LPS. Feel free to let me know in the comments down below which one you prefer, if you are a wholehearted fan of the original design or if you actually prefer this prototype look. Personally, I prefer the prototype look. Uh, I've always wanted to give it a go since I saw people painting their own. Um, and uh, I finally bit the bullet, finally built up the courage and took the leap and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm not being serious, I'm not pretty happy. I am unbelievably happy. I freaking love this LPS. I'm not even gonna lie here. So that concludes the process of making my prototype 675. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope that it kind of lived up to your expectations and hopes for how the design looks. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like I said at the beginning, I know I'm going to get people who hate me for painting an official LPS. And I, I understand that. That's your guys' opinion. You know, feel free to have that in the comments. Just know that I'm happy with how it turned out. And I I'm keeping this LPS. Like, it's going to be mine probably forever because I freaking love this pet. I think I've said really all I have to say now. So I'm just going to leave you guys with some close-up photos of this LPS with her kind of twin, I guess, original here. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Excuse me fellas, I just need to 
do my outro. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, like always, please don't forget to like, comment, and of course subscribe. And I will see you soon with a new video. Bye guys!